Welcome to this MBL webinar on the topic of conduct in financial remedy proceedings. I'm Sadie Glover, a family law partner and the author of A Practical Guide to Short Marriages for Family Lawyers, published by Law Brief Publishing. I practice in all areas of private family law with a particular emphasis on complex financial remedies. I'm joined today by the brilliant Chris Bryden, who is Head of Family and Property at Four Kings Bench Walk. Chris was called to the bar in 2003, and he practices predominantly in financial remedies, contentious probate and inheritance act claims. Chris is the author of A Practical Guide to the Death of a Spouse During Divorce, also from Law Brief Publishing. As ever, if you have any questions following this webinar, feel free to reach out to either Chris or me and we will do our best to answer them. So what do we mean when we talk about conduct? Essentially, we're referring to financial misconduct that would be inequitable to the court to disregard as per Section 25 g of the Matrimonial Causes Act. In this webinar, we're going to be looking at the different types of conduct and the statutory, statutory basis for add-back claims. We'll have a look at some of the cases where add-back claims have been brought and succeeded, and some of those where the threshold was not met. The first case I want to look at today is the case of OG and AG in 2020. While add-back was not a significant feature of this case, Mr Justice Mostyn usefully summarised the four types of conduct which we'll be looking at today. The first is gross and obvious personal misconduct requiring a financial consequence if it is to be reflected in the award. Secondly, wanton and reckless dissipation of assets leading to add back. Litigation misconduct leading to a cost order. And finally, non-disclosure leading to inferences being drawn about the extent of the assets. And Chris and I will be covering all of these bases uh, throughout our talk today. 